Beloved leader, may the joy, the peace, and the grace of God be with you. I want to thank God for you, for your diligence, for your tenacity, for the fact that year after year, many of you are diligent to fulfill the duties of your ministry through your group. God bless you. I want to transmit something to you from heart to heart, especially in this Christmas week. And it's this. The Lord might be delaying his specific word to you in other areas of ministry because he is guiding you in your family, in your marriage, and with your relatives and friends. God is doing something different. In my life, this started months ago when I said, Lord, please show me how we can strengthen the groups so we can strengthen the families and the marriages. How many know that Christian marriages and families are, many of them are in crisis. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the other way around, you strengthen the families so that the families will make the ministry stronger, the churches will get stronger, and the prayer groups will get stronger. So it is a change of priority, but it has to come with a baptism of faith in our lives, to believe the impossible, to believe that even second cousins, relatives, uh, uh, close and, and far away relatives, they can be transformed, they can be saved. Some of them are saved, but may, maybe they are still in bondage or in bitterness or in division. And God wants to bring His glory, His light into our families. It is like God is saying, Church, I'm giving you a strategy. By strengthening your families, you will be able to reach nations in my name. And this is incredible. I, I will tell you, before this season, I did not have that kind of faith even to preach to others. But by the grace of the Lord, I can say to you that the Lord desires to transform and renew your home. Now, those of you who... who whose family is completely saved already. Thank God for that. But then comes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the fire of holiness, the spirit of unity. In other words, homes that are in revival, taking communion together, baptizing in water those who have not been baptized, if you don't have a church, a local church. And then being so full of the Spirit that the gifts of the Spirit begin to flow. So I'm presenting to you a vision for revival through our homes, our family, relatives, and friends. And I want to leave you with this wonderful scripture Isaiah 9 6 for a child is born to us a son is given to us in our homes right not just to us personally but in our marriages in our families and in our nations the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father and prince of peace I want to talk to those leaders uh, whether you are a, a leader also in your church or not, but you're a leader in the groups, that's why you're receiving this video. I want to talk to leaders that are somehow frustrated, like you don't have enough, like, like ah, it, God should be doing more for me. Please, ask God not to change anything in your circumstances yet, and start by changing your heart. And then you will say, this does not depend on me, the ministry depends on God because the government will rest on the shoulders of Jesus. Jesus is my leader and he will become, he will be called wonderful counselor. I'm saying to you, beloved leader, that you do have wisdom and an advisor, which is Jesus himself through the Holy Spirit. He's the wonderful counselor and the mighty God. He can do things that you don't even dream of. Things so powerful. And then everlasting Father. The times are in his hands. Some of you might be saying, my life is going away. Yes, I, I say that, uh, think that often because I'm going like, oh, I'm not as young as I used to be. No, we're all getting there, more mature and older, yes? But he's the everlasting father. He has eternity in his hands. And he can do in your life in one year what you couldn't do in your life for 
50 years or 60 or 70. So relax and let the wonderful counselor be with you. The, the government, the leadership is on his shoulders. And then finally it says the Prince of Peace. One of the signs that we are in the will of God and that our attitude is right is when we have peace. And I said to the Lord this morning, Lord, yes, I've been asking this all year around. And so far, we're close to the end of a year, and there is no answer, hardly any answer, not even a word. But I'm saying, Lord, even if you don't change any circumstance around me, I want to say that you are my peace. I submit to you. You don't have to do anything for me. You already did it. I'm yours. And whether I live or die, whether I succeed or don't succeed, you are my victory. You are my power. So in that surrender, my dear leader, we find the Prince of Peace. And may in this season, may the Lord bring his peace upon you. It, that means that you will still be waiting for things to happen and asking God for miracles and praying and fasting, but you will wait with a smile because you wait like those victorious people that are waiting to enter the game and win. You will win, but only as you wait for the Prince of Peace to intervene and you will have peace in your heart. May the Lord bless you. Keep dreaming of a family that is redeemed. Keep dreaming even of neighbors and close friends and relatives that are transformed by the fire of God in your lives. God bless you. Keep strong. Merry Christmas.